All right, well, this officially starts the repair. Uh, just hanging out with uh, my son, Zachary. Hello. Hello. You see? Yeah. Chit-chatting while I work. Zach always has his own projects on the run. This is his work table. Eh? Don't shut up. Don't shut up that boy with that card. Eh? But was me. So, while he works on his projects, Daddy works on his projects. So we're just gonna start. I'm gonna start by uh, taking off this lat on the top here, um, and uh, so that I can expose the top top layer and just get this canvas off. Most of these screws actually seem either completely rusted over or... I ain't not using a uh, power drill for this and I want to strip the, uh, strip these bolts if I can help it, though I probably will because it's pretty rusted. This one's not even budget. Tu fais des blocs? Oui. Mais t'as la colle, t'as des blocs là. Tiens, tu te fais pas, t'as plus de blocs. Non. T'as plus de blocs. Non. Hum. Il y a une five minute break. I need to make some blocks for my son. In order to get under all of this, we're gonna have to also take this uh, metal guard off. Basically, we're stripping it completely down to the bare minimum. Just down to the hull, I guess. What worries me more is I'm gonna have to, there's a kind of a bottom piece of wood here and it's covering the bottom. I'm gonna have to take that off too. Hopefully I don't get any surprises when I take that off. But the sooner we get this membrane completely off the wood, the better. That's what, that if anything could rot cedar, that would be it, trapping moisture against the wood. Look at these white guys. 
Hein? Je pense que c'est assez cool, là. This lead paint kind of worries me a bit. <laughs> not sure if I'm not supposed to be like, it's not in our generation to have lead paint. And I, all you hear about is how dangerous it is, but is it dangerous because I breathe it in? Is it dangerous because I'm touching it? I think it is it's dangerous even to just touch it. Lead seeps into your pores and poison. from the bottom. All right, so I should look for these screws then. I'm also taking off, I'm gonna throw out these seats. Uh, we'll make some nice, some nice new ones. That I'll probably be able to keep. Seems pretty sturdy, but these I don't really trust. Let's see now, but still gonna take them out so that I can properly work. All right, well, just with a couple of hours of uh, of uh, if, if, if even that. I've taken off all the trim and all, all uh, uh, evidence of the uh, the old canvas, and uh, so that's going to really help. So that really exposed the whole bottom. See how now it's just the wood. So it's going to it's going to let this old wood uh, breathe and dry off completely. The hull, like everything, still looks like there's nothing rotten. So it's all good news. It's all good. It's all good. The worst, the worst side is really this part here. This end. Uh, this end was uh, got exposed a lot more moisture. But it's really just the top. And of course, we have our. Uh, the the biggest uh, the biggest problem the hole right through and it also it kind of it fractured uh, the rib right here on the inside so we'll probably have a rib to replace and uh, it's too bad it didn't only break one board because it broke this one completely it also cracked oh sorry that was there so it cr it broke this one completely the this one board and it also cracked the ones the two beside it so that means we have uh, those three sections to to replace. Uh, yeah. I just finished the cleaning up of, I took off all the, the old canvas and now I want to uh, put a coat of, uh, or rather clean the wood with uh, a three-in-one wood cleaner that's usually reserved for decks but should do the job. Um, it's a mild day today so um, yeah, I wanted to take advantage of that because there's not going to be many of these left. So it's about five, six degrees now which is at the limit of the product specifications uh, and the fact that I'm gonna need a, uh, a garden hose for this, and uh, I've brought mine out for <laughs> out of retirement 
for uh, the season. So uh, and it's and it works. So uh, it didn't seem to do any. The, the pipes weren't froze or anything. So I'll start by sanding. Uh, just a qu a quickly sanding off whatever uh, finish that I still see that's attached to the wood, and then I'll apply the wood cleaner. Uh, one thing. Um, oh, and since it's uh, since it's Sunday afternoon, uh, I still have I also have a beer. Um, oh, for anyone that's uh, close to Ontario, you guys should check these guys out. Bose. Uh, they are no way affiliated to my channel. Uh, they're uh, they're not a sponsor or anything. I just really like their beer. Um, so good craft brewery. Um, so yeah. One thing, an update for the project. Pretty big, pretty substantial update for the project. Project. Um, I've been doing a lot of research in the last couple of days since I started uh, working on the canoe. And uh, from people, I, I found some some um, forums and I actually talked to a couple of uh, canoe repair people, uh, specialists. And they all confirmed that, because I don't know if it was clear from the beginning, I wanted to put an, uh, I wanted to just either varnish the exterior at the beginning, out of out of ignorance, um, and and then I, I and then when I saw that that wasn't an option, I wanted to put a fiberglass membrane uh, uh, in the exterior. And then the more I read, the more I saw that that is a big no no. And it makes total sense to me as a woodworker that it, that it, this this is not a good idea once once it's explained to me, because if you put a membrane uh, like a plexiglass membrane epoxy on the outside of this. That is completely stuck to the to the outside of the wood, and now you've basically sealed that one side. But the other side is not going to be sealed that way. So no matter how you finish the outs, the inside, sorry, uh, there's water that's going to get into the wood. It's going to swell like, like normal wood does, and uh, what's that? Gonna, that's going to uh, like crack the wood because one side doesn't want to move, the other side does. It's a big. It's just going to be a big mess. So, uh, all around, bad idea. So, turn around. We're gonna make this, we're gonna just basically re-canvas the canoe. Not quite the look that I was looking for, but uh, I, ha I did some more research into uh, some, uh, like what we can do with the canvas, and it actually got me excited about the project in a different way, because we're gonna be able to paint this, uh, we'll make some nice, desi uh, nice design on the outside. We're not gonna just make it just a basic color green or red or all those basic canoes I saw some really creative ideas uh, so we'll make something nice but before we get to all that I have to clean the inside uh, get it uh, I need to get it raw so I'm not sure yet um, I see I still see some uh, some stain or varnish that's on uh, the inside so I'm gonna like I said a while ago I'm gonna start by sanding just the bigger parts that I see and I'm gonna try to uh, put the wood cleaner on it. Hopefully that'll be enough. It most likely most likely will. Uh, if anything, if there's any other spots that are still uh, like saturated with finish and that wouldn't absorb a good, uh, wouldn't absorb the oil, I could always just sand it. We'll see. But this is, uh, it, it, it does kind of stress me out a bit because this is the kind of the last day um, that I'll most likely have. You see, guys, see the, the fog in the, in the background here. You can barely see the trees in the background if I see correctly in the screen. It's it's just all of a sudden really mild. So, without further ado, let's get started.
just leave this on for about 15. I normally you leave it on for about 15 minutes and then you scrub and then uh, and then you would uh, just rinse it off. Um, it's already been 10. I actually scrubbed a couple minutes ago and then reapplied it just to try to get it to sink in a bit more. Uh, you can see in the middle it's lightened up considerably. That's pretty nice. But there seems to be a lot of what I could assume mildew. See the darker and the darker ribs. I don't know if there's going to be anything that we're going to do that could make those better. I'll do some more research to see if there's anything that could get the that black out of those out of those ribs, or do they have to be replaced? If I want to bring this thing really back to uh, to its original beauty. Well, the. Uh, the canoe has had a chance to dry, so I did the I, I cleaned the outside, and uh, it did a pretty good job. Um, so as you can see, the color like it's it's very it's a lot cleaner, and the wood's a lot lighter than it was. Um, the only thing though is here. Oops. Oh. Okay, so if I if I show you guys a little bit up close here, see how this is very dark here. So this stuff did not come out. Let me see. Okay, so these two. All right. So this these planks here. This is basically water damage and uh, probably what, like mold or whatever. So the conditioner uh, did not do anything. So I'm gonna try out another technique. This is household bleach. Just uh, your basic household bleach. So I'm just taking a bit of this with a paintbrush and I'm gonna, I'm gonna apply it. Just my imagination, but it's all already <laughs> it's already starting to lighten up. All right, so we're gonna try to clean up a bit of this. Uh, see what's see if we can because we have to remove all the finish and give a nice uh, sanding prior to re-canvassing. So let's give this a, a shot. Just a uh, furniture stripper. Woodworking tip time. Uh, in several of my books, I had seen uh, the. I love traditional woodworking books, um, and one of the uh, techniques that uh, they were that that the several of the books cover are scrapers, and scrapers have been around uh, as old as uh, hand planes. They, there wasn't anything around. Uh, there wasn't any sandpaper uh, around uh, in the whatever 1800s and prior. So, or maybe there was. Whatever you know what I mean. Old <laughs> before there wasn't any sandpaper. Um, this is just a piece of metal. Uh, this is just a basic sheet metal um, that, if you just burnish one end, which is just taking a metal filing and rub it across diagonally. It makes a nice even burr. It's I I always hesitated on trying it because I figured uh, how could I like is it something is it a skill that I need to to acquire in order to get that edge proper and I just tried it took me two seconds uh, just just doing it diagonally makes a nice even uh, edge just it, it's the same it's the same thing we do as bushcrafters 
uh, to get that edge to to strike uh, on the back of our knives to strike a um, ferro rod. So uh, the idea behind this is that you scrape uh, instead of using sandpaper to rub, you scrape this across the surface, of, and it, it takes a very thin, thin layer, nice and smooth, off of the uh, off the wood. So sanding these ribs with basically this shape would be very difficult to do with either a sandpaper block because you're always going to be either just getting the sides because it's always curved. Uh, I can't do it with the orbital sander either because the same same thing, the, the circle is not going to catch it. But with this, look at these. It's just getting a nice clean shaving off. And because it's just sheet metal, I don't care about these nails. Like it's not gonna, I don't have to have a perfect edge on this thing. I just move on to the next. All right, so I've uh, scraped and sanded and, and, uh, and stripped uh, the canoe, no, not me, um, enough for now. We are left with uh, quite a different canoe than what we started with. Uh, there's, you can still, you can see that there still is some finish at some places. A little slight piece of uh, red color there. We'll get rid of that later. So we'll start on uh, the uh, on the physical repairs of getting rid of this uh, these rotten parts. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to open the entire both both ends. I'm probably gonna have to open completely to uh, to replace these pieces of the ends here. So that's probably what I'm going to tackle next. This this thing has to go. Uh, these pieces I'm going to have to repair. I'm going to have to cut probably here where it's healthy and then put a new piece in here. Um, same thing with the other end. So the, the middle is not too bad other than uh, of course repairing um, these ribs and the hole. So anyways, so that'll be the uh, then uh, what the next episode is going to be about. Uh, it's going to be actual woodwork and uh, uh, repairing those pieces so yeah it's coming along nicely though it's been pretty easy until now it's been a lot of hard work but nothing that, that I had to really uh, learn much about because it's just stripping a finish and sanding it and trying to get it as clean as possible so from now on it comes the real challenge so uh, see you guys next time